right? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Let's be back in the house of the Lord again once again. Praise Amen. the Lord. Let's just turn your Bibles, praise the Lord, to Proverbs chapter 29. We're going to look at one particular verse and allow the Spirit to take us uh, where He wants us to go. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. I'm just going to read one particular verse. Amen. Amen. And that's verse uh, 16 of Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29, verse 16. I'm just reading from the Amplified Bible, but you kept the chest of it. 16 says, When the wicked are in authority, transgressions or sins increase, crimes increase. But the righteous shall see the fall of the wicked. Sake of a title, caught or struck between a rock and a hard place. Amen. Amen. And the theme is how to vote in 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this message is not about me telling you who to vote for. Let's get that perfectly clear. But we need to know who we're voting for. Amen. We need to understand the signs of the times. We need to understand, thus saith the Lord, according to, <coughs> excuse me, the election coming up this year. Right. And hopefully, we're going to look at some things today, uh, how to vote and how not to vote. Because I believe that many people just go along with the wave. They really do. They go along with what they're used to, what mama did or what papa did or you know, I believe this way and I believe that way. But we need to find out for ourselves because this is a very important election. One of the most important elections in our lifetime. And according to the Word of God, we're near the end. You know what I'm saying? We're near the end. So we need to understand some things and do some research. Why am I doing this? We don't, we don't, uh, the election is not until November the 3rd. But the reason why I'm starting now on this message because I want us to do some personal research. I don't want us to, and the Lord don't want us to, to vote because we feel a certain way or we like a certain party. We need to do our research according to the Word of God. Amen? That's extremely important. Extremely important. Uh, praise God. The term caught between a rock and a hard place actually comes from a mythology, Greek mythology. And it was a, a particular god who was like a god of the world, when it was like a tornado or a hurricane. And the other god was a god of a, a, a sea creature, a mighty sea creature. So what they say, be caught, uh, uh, caught between a rock and a hard place, both places are where you, either way you went is unpleasant. Yeah. <laughs> either one you choose will be unpleasant. Praise God. It actually means that you are in a difficult situation when you have to choose between two equally unpleasant courses yeah. of action. So either or. So this is where we are today. And this is why we have to do our research. Because people of this planet mainly in the United States, mainly have been moved by how they feel. Not really knowing the facts about not too much of anything. We just accept things as they are. But according to the Word of God, we as believers, we hear the voice of God. Amen. We're supposed to hear the voice of God because the Spirit of God said when he's, when he's here, His job is to lead us, listen, and to guide us into all truth. So a lot of things that we see with our eyes and understand with our eyes, we have to look through our, look at our through, through our spiritual eyes and allow the Spirit to show us and to guide us in this crucial time. Like I said again, I'm not talking about any particular candidate today. That's not my purpose. I'm not focusing on anybody in particular. But what we need to do, we really need to hear from God. 
because either or, whoever you vote for, somebody's not going to win. <laughs> Period. And we have to be settled whoever is elected. The reason why is because God is the one who raises up kings and take down kings. Amen. He's the one. He already knows who's going to win. Amen. Amen. God knows everything. He sure does. So we have to be pleased with the way he chooses because it's all a part of his plan. Amen. 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 The Bible says heaven and earth are going to pass away, but my words are going to last forever. Amen. 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 It tells us in Matthew 24, he tells us, uh, uh, the some of the signs that's going to be these are the beginning of sorrows, war, rumors of wars and earthquakes. This is just the beginning. Man's heart fell for the fear of things that come upon the earth, and that's happening right now. So we need to be very careful and be led by our spirit and not by some other means. Y'all listening? Because the, the Bible we're going to see today gives us so many uh, uh, things to, to have hope in. And lets us know that God is in control. This, yes, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 4, the God of this world who blinded the minds of them with believe not. But we are believers. We believe something. We believe the truth. We don't believe a man. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 5 tells us, 5 and 6 tells us, curse the man or the arm who trusts in the arm of flesh. We're not supposed to trust man. Amen? No man. I care who the man is. Listen, Bible also tells us in Titus that all men are liars. See, God cannot lie, but men lie. So we don't put all our trust in a man or a movement or a party. We put our trust in God. So on that note, we really have to really look at how we come to a conclusion of actually voting correctly. Amen? Amen. When the wicked, listen, are in leadership, Sin is going to prevail. It doesn't matter what kind of organization it is. Church, family, <laughs> the government. If you're wicked, then it's going to, it's going to trickle down. It's going to, in, 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 in your household, your church, the government is going to proceed from the top. That's why it's important because that's why I say those who are in power, especially those who are in power, the kings and the priests and the I mean, the kings and the prince, princes, these are the ones who are in, in charge. They're the ones who regulate and uh, push forth the, the laws and the rules and the regulations of the land. But our vote does count. See? Our vote counts. That's why people have died for to vote. People before us have died and went through so many things to sacrifice for us to vote. Just to say, well, somebody's going to win anyway, that's not good. That's not a good enough answer. Don't complain if your candidate doesn't get in there. Now, if they don't, see, most people are going to complain anyway. Most people are going to complain anyway because the movement of the majority of the people in this land don't know God. Now, for me to say that, somebody might say, what do you mean you, I don't know God? The Bible says you know by the fruits. See? And only God can give, if God is the one who plants the seed, amen, amen, of new birth. He knows what kind of seed and what kind of fruit you're going to bear. Amen. So if you're saying you love God and you know God, but your fruit is bearing something else and demonstrating something else to the world, amen, that's going to tell me that you not, you not, you haven't been planted and rooted by the Spirit of God. And it's a proof of fact that the majority of the people in the human race are not going to make it. Because Jesus said, brought us the way of destruction. And then listen, he said, he said this, John, Matthew 7, there's many on that road. Well, these are not my words. These are the word of God. See? This is the word of God. He said there's a road that's very narrow. It's a narrow road. And he says there are few who find it. So we really got to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves and examine our lives and see if we're going to be voting come this election for a particular person, a particular party, or we're voting the way the Spirit is leading us to vote. That's extremely important. And so, you know, like I said, this is not about telling somebody how to vote and who to vote for. Let me tell you something. It's bad on both sides. You understand what I'm saying? It's bad on both sides. I just leave it at that. Because not one, one party out here is going to save you. Amen? I kind of wrote something this week. Uh, uh, I, I posted in, in, in Facebook 
and it reads, praise God, know and believe what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. Watch how you walk and behave. Yeah. Listen, because you may be the only Bible that people will ever read. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Put something else out there and it says, I said, please stop people, all the haters, tourists, Trump, Joe, Pence, and Harris. Stop letting the devil devour you. Yes, vote, but remember, the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Turn back to the Bible and vote Jesus. Amen. And another one I placed on there was, please all people of the U.S. and the world, no, no particular uh, uh, political party will save you. Only the blood of Jesus. Amen. Vote Jesus. Amen. So on that note, I want us to look at some things and, and kind of go and look at some things as far as actually what's going on. You know, people say we gotta, we got to save our democracy. Do you know a lot of people don't even know what that means? No, seriously. You hear it talk, and a lot of people don't really know because, you know, they don't, you, you got to, in order to, your, your life is going to change and things are going to change and, and, and make a difference in this world. You have to really know what's going on. You have to know what's going on. It doesn't take much. We are in an age right now that's high technology. We have all the information in our hands. I remember years ago, maybe you guys remember years ago, the, 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 uh, um, the encyclopedias. The guy will come over and sell your family, you know, the, those big old books. Yeah. Now you have all that stuff on your phone. And yes, I know and you know that there is a lot of fake news out there. And this is why you really have to do your research and find out what is really going on. One thing that I realize that really is evident of something that is proven today when it's like on a video. You know what I mean? Or you hear somebody saying out of their own mouth and, and realize that they said it and it's not, you know, it wasn't a Photoshop or something. Somebody did something to it. This is what they said because they said it more than once. So these are, you know, these are some of the things that we can understand. So you really got to pay attention because it means a lot to this world who you vote for and how you vote. Because we as believers have to follow the Spirit of God. Can't keep emphasizing that enough. Like I said earlier, I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. But we're going to look at some things and how to, how not to vote and how to vote. Amen. Because and then we're going to try to wrap it up and kind of get to the point of the next movement or the next phase that's actually happening on this planet. Because you ever heard the term, the new normal? You hear so many, this is the new normal. Let me tell you something right now. It is new. Things are not going to be the way they used to be. This is like a, the stage one of actually, actually the things that's coming upon this planet. Amen. This is this going. This is what's happening. These are happening to a, and a, a pe the average person don't even know what's going on because the God of this world has blind those. Listen, listen, blind those who what believe not. This is why we have to believe the word of God. Not a movement, not a man, not a, a, a political party, but God. We here. Y'all ready? Praise the Lord. I want to explain what democracy means. It's a government in which supreme power is invested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly through representation. In other words, you vote for somebody and you put in somebody in a particular office. They don't prove that because you're your cousin. Or you know them since they was little. You look at them, what, what do they preach? What are some of the things and policies that they bring it along. Amen. But like I said earlier, well, people say, you know, I've, I've been a Republican all my life. Grandpapa and grandmama voted, so I vote the same way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The parties that are represented today, either Democrat or Republican, are not the same uh, 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 beliefs that they were years ago. They've changed tremendously. Some have become so more liberal. Liberal must means uh, you have more freedom. It's more do your own thing, so to speak. But we got to understand that. And then you have some, you have the Republican Party where people are splitting right down the middle. 
Some bleed this way and some bleed that way. But like I said earlier, this is not to try to look at any particular candidate. I just want to give you guys information to give you a, 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 a head start before this election in November. And between this time now and then, do some research. Do some research. Because your vote does count. And it will make a difference. But don't be surprised if your candidate doesn't win. Remember I said, God is the one who put that person in the office. He's the one. He already knows what's going on. Regardless of who you ever want, who you want, they don't win, it's still part of God's plan. That's when we really got to start looking up and really start focusing on the Lord. Because I'm telling you, whoever gets in there ain't going to make it no better. And I'm going to record say that right now. Because the Bible says, listen, he said it. <laughs> There's going to be a time where it's going to be peace, then sudden destruction. You can find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Read it for yourself. Amen. So, do we need a, a democracy? Yes, because it ensures proper functioning of the government since it is the, is the people who elect and therefore this makes, more, makes them more accountable. So when you put somebody off as you, this is what you believe in. Don't be surprised they get in there and start changing stuff up. Well, you voted for them. Well, they was a Democrat. Or they was a Republican. Uh-uh. Know what you're voting for. Know who you put in there. You gotta do they 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 teach your values, they stand by your policies. We gotta wake up, people. We have to wake up, man. We really do. Can't cry spill milk when it's all over with. So this is why it's important that we vote. Millions suffered and died for a right to vote. Listen, so we gotta really realize that it's important that we do get out and vote. Some of you say already right now, but hard, I know what I'm voting for right now. All the stuff I'm saying. Ain't no way I'm voting for that person. Ain't no way I'm voting for that. Come on, y'all. Ain't no way I'm voting for that person. My mind is made up. But listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. <laughs> you better be careful. What's that, old, what's that old term? Be careful what? What you ask for? Or what you wish for? Because that's just why you got to do your research. Do your homework. Don't let nobody indoctrinate you and tell you what things and how to do stuff. We're not puppets. Amen. Amen. We're born again. We have the Spirit of God. And we're not going to believe a stranger. We're going to believe the voice of God. Amen. Amen. Watch this. One of the things that we want to look at right now is what not to do when you vote. Don't vote because the political party. Don't go that route. I had a little argument with somebody the other day about, you know, I asked them a question. I said, what do you think? What do you think about, do you think all Democrats are going to go to hell? Because they don't believe the way you believe. Because there's a lot of Republicans think they're going to heaven and they're not. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. You see what I'm saying? So don't get caught up in that. Know what you believe. Understand your word. Know the voice of God. This is important. Know the voice of God. Because if we don't know these things, when that movement comes, and when the Antichrist comes on the scene, He's going to be this fellow who's going to fix everything that was broke. And people are going to, they're going to lift them up. They're going to praise them. And they're going to take the mark and it's going to be all over. You didn't sign your destiny. You didn't seal your destiny. We got to know these things. We got to know them. I would never thought in my lifetime that, you know, I would say maybe 100 or 200 years from, from now, this all happened. I wouldn't even be here. I'd be home with the Lord. But we're here. Things is happening. So that's why it's a wake-up call for all of us to, to really, you know, teach our loved ones and, and our, our, our family members and those close to us about really what this truth is and really what's happening. Because once your last breath is out of you, your, your destiny is sealed. Either with heaven or hell. Either one. So this is why it's important. Why well, it's important. Ain't no going back. I'm, I'm a, let me go back and try to change this thing up. Ain't no purgatory out here. Ain't no head. That's a halfway house. I get the, you're not going to get together. If you don't get together. And see, the Bible tells us it's a point on the man once to die in the judgment. So, in other words, who makes an appointment? God made the appointment for us. He knows when we're leaving it. He the only one knows the appointment. We don't know it. That's why we got to walk by faith and trust Him. Because he had he has control of our lives, man. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You don't play with nobody like that. So let's do this thing right, amen. Let's, another thing we ought not to do. 
we ought not to uh, vote by our feelings. Vote by our feelings. There's a lot of people who lost jobs through this pandemic. Amen? And they're suffering right now. They stand in line for food. God has blessed us. We don't have to, nobody on believe, believe is experiencing that. Either probably still working, still got money, things, things are better than, than normal for us. But some people it's not normal. And people are getting agitated. Not only in America, but all over the world. They're getting agitated. And so their feelings are up to a point now, and it's like, look, this is it. This is what we got to do. And they're reacting by feelings. But see, the thing about this whole thing, y'all, is that God, He sees all, knows all. He's, he's allowing this to happen. Because I tell you one thing, it's calling the people to arms and realize and let us know who we really believe in and who we trust in. Amen? Because a lot of people believe the Pharisees in the scribes. But they were demons. Yes, sir. The Sanhedrin, they were a bunch of demons. But they were religious folks. There's a lot of religious folks out here that believe if you don't believe like them, something wrong. But we got to understand, and I'm going to show you a verse of this, we got to understand how, how, how God sees things. And it kind of changed my attitude too about how I look at people and view, and view people and view what they're doing. Amen? Uh, more than a minute. Another way we ought to do when we, um, when we vote, don't vote for race or color. We got to stop that, y'all. Don't, don't vote that way. Because that doesn't mean anything. You, you gotta, like I said, you gotta know the facts. Now let's look at some things, how to vote. We gotta, we gotta fact check the candidates. We gotta go back, I don't care if we go, you know, we, a lot of, you see what's going on with a lot of the campaigning and stuff, a lot of this, the back and forth, they taking stuff back, it happened 20 years ago. But people have changed, and people are not perfect. You see what I'm saying? And people always, it's always the negative. It's always the negative that they're focusing on. And that's not, that's not how you do it. You know what I mean? This is this is not us against them. Who can make the person look bad? These are this is this is child's play. And it's sad that we as so-called called adults are doing these this bashing towards each other, you know? Just to win. And no good and well when you get there, you're gonna do what you want to do anyway. Regardless if I got your vote or not. That's why we gotta vote for Jesus. Amen. Listen. Another reason what we ought to do. Do they believe what you believe in? What are your morals? Does an average believer know what they believe? Do we, do, do we believe that the Bible says thou shalt not kill, but we're killing? Huh? Do we believe in adultery or fornication? Oh, we don't. Listen. What do we believe? And see, what's happened to a lot of people, they're becoming very soft to a lot of things. They're, 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 they're dumbing down to, to things that, that's against the Bible. And what's happening is, slowly but surely, you're being seduced away from the truth. And once that happens, enemy's going to throw some more darts up in there and get you to the point where you are totally deceived. You don't want that. you got to stay woke. Amen? We gotta check the policies, amen. Praise God. Mm. And the fourth thing is, we gotta go by what the Spirit is saying, y'all. Let me tell you something. This country has never been a Christian nation. I'm gonna say it again. This country has never been a Christian nation. Never has. It never has. But people say, you know, in God we trust on our money. Well, Jesus said you can't love God in mammoth. And we run. You and I know that. <laughs> This country loves money. Money uh, rolls, the, rolls the boat, man. It moves the ship. Makes things work. Amen? So when you say you believe in God and we trust, what God are you talking about? The God of matters or the God above? But you know them by the fruits. You know them by that. Forget what they say. People can honor with, with the Lord all, with the, all they want with their lips. But where is their heart? Is their heart far from them? See, you know, you can usually tell a person how they speak. Because the Bible says, and I believe in uh, uh, Matthew 12, 34, yeah. It says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, 
I usually, usually can tell a person after a short period of time with them what's coming in their mouth. That's who they are. That's who they are. I don't care what nobody said who they are. This is who you are. Because out of the abundance of your heart, what's in here, the mouth going to speak. Doesn't matter what office you hold. Doesn't matter what kind of title you have. That's who you are. You know, this the other day I had a sense of wisdom with somebody talking about this person is this and that, this person's a preacher or whatever. And, 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 and when I met them, my first encounter was there was no control over the tongue. There was no difference from somebody who was out in the street. But you hold this particular office, and I didn't condemn, I didn't put the person down. I just knew that I didn't want to deal with you. And I don't want to deal with you. This is what we got to understand some things. And it's not, you know, we can put people down softly but in, in, in an intelligent way. Because titles and things, don't they don't move me. How you treat me, how we interact only allows me to, you know, you want to go this way, I go this way with you. Amen? amen. If you're going the right way, that's the way I'm going to, that's the way I'm rolling. Amen? Praise God. So it's important that we understand that. Mm, God is good. You and I know that one of the things that's happening right now, and I want to clear this up right now too because we hear it so much, is uh, Black Lives Matter. Okay? That's one of the things that's on the ticket. That's one of the things that's around the world. People are talking about. But do your research on that too. Do your research on that too. If you look it up, look who, look, look who uh, Google it, whatever. Look who started it. It's a movement that's not of God. Now understand what I'm saying when I mean that. Now yes, that uh, uh, black America and all over the world it's we're moving and we're using this term and a lot of people don't know what this term is really all about but I can understand I'm explaining to you they're using this term because they're, t they're tired and we're tired of systemic racism over the years of oppression that's for real as a black man, I can tell you that, that's for real. And it's been going on for too long, and now it's, we're just saying stop. But there has been some things that's been added up under the umbrella of Black Lives Matter. If you even look at who's funding that movement, that's not of God either. Look it up. Do your research. Find out. And that's why people say, well, look, well, all lives matter. Let me tell you something. All lives won't matter until black lives matter. Because that's included in the all. You see? But we know it's always been a systemic racism. We always, we, we've been knowing that for years. We, we, we see it happening all around us. And um, it's been going on for a long time. You look at our jail system. Correction system. It's no office. You see the office of corrections. People come out and really can't even get back into society because they're ruined for life. Is this a plan or is this organized? Maybe, but we got to understand something. God is greater than all this. And this is why we can't go by our feelings because, yes, we have been oppressed people for years. And when I start hearing people saying, yeah, like, you know, uh, cops lie, yeah, they matter too. But there's a lot of racial profile going on too. Let's get that down to the nitty gritty. Let's put that out in the open because, and it's, it's, a, it's a proven fact. It's a proven fact because there's more uh, of, of black Americans in jail more than anybody else. And a lot, of them, a lot of them are in there on false pretense. You know, so we gotta, we gotta, this is what we're saying. Enough is enough. And we're gonna say we love your neighbor like you love yourself. Prove it. That's all we're talking about. But when you start throwing up under, under that name and all this uh, riot and all these things that's going on, it, it gives them a bad name like this is what we do. We tear, we, de we destroy, we destroy. No, no. Satan has Satan has really been slick out here, y'all. He's, he's he's been slick out here, causing people to really. It's like it's you know, causing this big race war. Let's cut this out. You know what I mean? We're the part of the human race. Amen. No black or white. And people say, "Well, Jesus was black. He could have been blue for his own concern." I believe him. I believe what I believe what he taught. So this is what we got to stay at because I'm telling you, you're leading this body anyway. You're getting a brand new spiritual body. Amen. That's all I'm out. It could be yellow. I'm, as long as I got a spiritual battle, I mean, body in this with the Lord. That's all that matters to me. 
I said, we got to wake up. We got to wake up and don't get caught up on these things. Start hating people. You know how hard it is to hate somebody? It's hard. It tears you apart. It brings out something in you that's, that's not good. You know, there's two sins out in this world that started out from the beginning. That's pride because that came from Satan because he fell from, from glory. And the next sin that really entered the earth was jealousy to Cain and Abel. Cain was jealous of his brother. And those two same spirits are doing more havoc today than anything else on this planet. Yeah. I'm telling you. People, I was telling my son like this, let me tell you something. People jealous of you, regardless. But I told him, I ain't got no time somebody weren't jealous of me. I mean, I, I don't even go there anymore. I mean, well, how does it make you feel that, you know, if I don't have this and you have, does that make you feel any better? The thing is, do you know the Lord? What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? A lot of folk don't know nothing about that. That's what I'm saying. People are misinformed. Listen, listen, my people perish from what? Right Lack now. of knowledge. And that's all kind of knowledge. Mainly knowledge of the Word of God, but it's a knowledge that we need to know how to live on this planet and love one another. I mean, people say, get your own planet. Well, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. You want to get a rock? Go ahead. And they haven't yet. Paul the God's plan, he put us here for a reason because we're being tested. We're being tested. Do we really love the way he loved? Let's look at a particular verse while we had Look at John chapter uh, 3. We read this in our response to reading. Look at, we know John 3.16, but I want to read John 3.16 down to 18 or 19, whatever, whatever the spirit moves. And I want you to see this particular verse because there's something I want you to really realize and see. You ready? John 3.16, for God said what? Love the world? That he gave his only begotten son? What did he say? For whosoever believes or what? Not perish, but what? But have everlasting life. Now watch the next couple verses. And I want to clear some things up there. It says, For God sent not his son in the world, watch, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now watch this. We read it again. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. You know, there's a lot of people here condemning people. Because they ain't doing what you're doing and act the way you act and walk the way you act and look the way you look, but they condemn it, though. But he said, don't condemn it. He said, don't do it. He didn't come here to condemn us. To condemn, oh, you ain't no good. And you ain't never going to be no good. You ain't doing what I'm doing. Uh-uh. He didn't come to do that. He said, but through him, the world might be saved. Watch this. He that, 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. See, condemn means a strongly disagreement, disapproval. See? But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This, watch this. 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Now, you and I know that people are living certain kind of different lives out here. Go to, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You and I know people are living different lives, right? Amen? Amen. They're living diff different lives than you. And one of the lives that we know people are living, watch this, that are living, and you hear so much because of the big movement now, the LGBTQRS, whatever, down the road. Listen, we know that's a big movement, right? It's a big movement. It's moving fast. But you look at it, it's moving fast because it's all part of the, what it tells us in the book of Luke. When the Lord says, this is like going to be like the days of Noah and the days of Lot. And we know what was going on back then. But let's, let's take a closer look at things, first of all. Because I want you to look at verse 9 in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 9. Now watch this. Know ye not. Let me get my, my other Bible too. Know ye not. Y'all are 9. I'll be there right in a minute here. Here we go. I can got here as fast as I could. Look at verse 9. He says, praise God. Um, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See that? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminates, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covenants, nor drunkards, nor 
prevail us, nor extortion us shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now watch this. Mm. Watch this. this. I love this. 11. And such were some of you. Now, if we're going to be believers, pay attention to this part. If we're going to be believers, and this is what this was happening, I see with this political thing going on right now. That's why I added this in here. If we're going to be believers, we got to realize at one time that was us. He just said, and such were some of you. See, he's not, Paul is not saying here, everybody who does these things ain't going to make it. Because that's the case. See, we don't know, we don't know God's calendar or who he wants to be in his kingdom. He chooses. You see, he chooses. We're elected. We're chosen. Amen. He makes the choice. So I thank God he chose us. Amen. Amen. But when we start condemning somebody, why would they ever come to Christ? He didn't come to condemn somebody. So what I see now, if a person's not doing something or living a certain kind of way because you live this way and you, and this, this man is what this man is, woman, but this one, stop that right now. Because he didn't condemn to God. They ain't never going to come to Christ. What happens is when you lift up Jesus in the power of his word, it's the spirit that changes a person's life. Amen. Not only, listen, that of those people's lives, but he changed our life also. Yeah. If it wasn't for the spirit of God, oh, hold on, stay right there. Go back, John, go back to, go back to the John 3. Go back down to John 3. I look at verse 6. And I'm going to prove something to you. This is why it's the spirit who changes a person's life. There's a lot of people in, that are living right now. Drunkards. Fornicators. Listen. Messed up. Living like the world. On their way to, on their way to hell. But God can intervene. He can intervene. Like he intervened for me and you. You see, we can't condemn people because they're doing this and that, they're doing that. And both parties are doing it. That's why I said vote Jesus. Love the way Jesus loved. See the way through Jesus' eyes. He says here in verse 6, John 3, 6. That which is born of flesh is flesh, right? And that which is born of spirit is spirit. Look at verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. Here's the verse. The wind blows where it listens, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but can't tell where it comes and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. In other words, the Spirit will save whoever He wants to save. That's what it's saying. You hear it. Amen. You don't see it, but you feel it. And that's the way this, it's the Spirit that quickens. It's the Spirit of God that awakens a dead soul. That's why we got to be born again. It means born from above. And see, a sinner man, a person who's living in these lifestyles, we have to present the gospel to them. Not our hatred, not our condemnation. Because you live in this way, God don't love you. Well, he loved us because such were some are we. Come on. We was the same way. I tell you what, when, hey, mm, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I go back to me and my brother here. You know, we come a long way by the Spirit of God. Because this is not the MO that we had planned. <laughs> God intervened, amen, brother? He intervened, and it's, it's a blessing to see, to be on this side, to see how far God has brought us. Hallelujah. And we, this. There's no perfection going on. There's no perfection. We're not talking about, we're talking about, we know that we're sinners and we're saved by grace. And we know that we sin, but we know we can sin less by the power of God. Go to um, Colossians chapter 3. Let me show you another uh, evidence here. We, we stay in this? So don't look at this election like condemning people because they ain't doing what you're doing. You don't know who, they could be on God's calendar next month to be saved and sanctified mm -hmm. and filled with His Spirit. Come on, somebody. Amen. We don't know that. It's the gospel 
that, that changes people from the inside out, man. You, if somebody start talking about me and put me down, you think I want to be around them? I'm not being around you. And all you're going to do is put me down and this ain't going to work. But wait a minute. Well, help me then. Help me. Don't throw rocks at me. Uh, um, let me get this right here. Where did I say go? Colossians chapter 3. Okay. Look at verse, uh, yeah, that's right. Look at verse uh, 5. He says there, watch this. Now watch this. This is powerful. He says, mortify. Or mortify means to crucify or put to death. Therefore, your members put you upon the earth. And it's the same thing we're talking about here in 1 Corinthians 9. He says, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. It's almost the same thing we read back there, right? In 1 Corinthians 6. Now watch this. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now look at the next verse. In which ye also walked some time when you lived in them. There it is again. We all didn't come from a perfect place, y'all. We all was born into sin. Amen. We all was lost. Amen. But thank God we're found. And so we can't look at people condemned because they ain't doing what we're doing. We ask the Lord to open up their eyes and open their understanding. You know, when a person came to me years ago about the gospel, I was like, get out of here. I don't want to hear that. Same thing with you. You didn't hear it the first time. You didn't hear it the first time. But see, God had mercy on me and you. So that he can have mercy on somebody else. So when people start separating, you look at this, this nasty stuff going back and forth, don't even pay that any mind. You pray that people will come into the kingdom. Amen? Don't condemn them because they ain't doing what you're doing. Because we once did the same thing. And even some right now, listen, even right now, we still have problems doing the right thing. We still, some of us, doing the wrong thing. Come on. That's what the Bible says. The Bible tells us in 1 John what? You say you don't sin, you lie. And the truth ain't in you. So we sin. Come on now, we sin. But I'm comfortable with that. Because I know the, sin, the sinless one lives inside of me. And that's why I gotta have faith in Him. And that's why you gotta put your faith in the Lord. And when you vote, you gotta put your faith in Christ. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, mm, I gotta get to this point. I don't know what, how time is moving and stuff like that, but I want you to show you another particular verse. Um, I want you to go over here to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's look at this. This is important. Let's look at this. Because uh, um, this is why we're doing this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Amen. Let me know when you're over there. Because I'm not there yet. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Both of us there yet? Amen. I guess I get to the point. Okay, here we go. I'm here now. All right, look at verse 1 in that 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I uh, meant to say second. If I said first, forgive me. Um, he says here in chapter 2, he says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Now pay attention. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as, as from us as the day of the Christ is at hand. Now watch this. Let no man deceive you by any means. Watch this. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. In other words, people are going to be falling away from the truth, y'all. You hear me now? That's why I said last week that the, the time now that people don't even want to listen to somebody going to stand behind the pulpit and preach that's old to a lot of people. People don't, they don't want that. They want the fast, quick, microwave blessing. You know what I mean? But it ain't, it ain't nothing to do with none of that. We got to hear the word. All the word. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Not something to make us feel good. I want the word to tell me what I'm doing wrong. So when I'm watching for the Lord, I know I was doing wrong. And I ain't got to stand there and say, Lord, Lord, have I done that? You work as a nigga. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear it right now. 
So I have a decision right now, Lord, forgive me, I repent. I confess that sins, and you're faithful and just to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. See? But to deny that you have a problem and there's sin, you're dealing with it, something's wrong with that. Deal with it. Because every secret thing it tells us in the Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14 and 13 says, Here the whole conclusion on the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, because this is the whole duty of man. And the next verse, verse in 14 says, and, and, and in Ecclesiastes chapter 13, 14 says, Every secret thing, good or bad, because it will be revealed. It's like that big projector when we stand before the Lord. He, everything, is, everything is being written down. Wow. We can't say, well, I didn't do it. I got here. Here it is right here. Amen? Watch this. Vince read here. Uh, and then he goes on to say, he says, hmm. first, uh, uh, I'll be three again. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. Listen, and that man, and that man, the Antichrist, that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So what he's telling them now, he's saying, look, yeah, the, the coming of Christ is not here yet. The rapture of the church is not here. He's not coming back from the church. But what he's saying is before he comes back, this man's going to come on the scene. See, what's happening is it's, going, it's, going, it's a great falling away. People don't want to hear the truth. Remember last week we was talking about also have itching ears? And he told them, pre, pre, be in seeds and now seeds, I want you to tell the truth. I don't care if they want to hear it or not. Put it out there. Sometimes it ain't going to be pleasant. But I don't know every time it's going to be good. Because it shows God he loves me. He says, those who love me, discipline. Discipline me. If we wasn't disciplined, we'd be out of hand. Do you know a red light is discipline? A stop sign is discipline? That's discipline. Because in the case, nobody would stop. And everybody would be accidental on every corner. This is, system is set up to be disciplined. You see? And I want to be disciplined on the hand of God. Watch this. Y'all ready? He says here. Who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what with, withholdeth that he might have revealed in his time. Look at 7. In the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now liveth will let until he be taken out of the way. Watch this. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall be destroyed in the brightness of his coming. Even him, watch this, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Here it is. With all deceivable, deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Watch this. And this is what God is going to be doing, y'all. Pay attention. God is going to do this. He says, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God is going to do this. God is going to do this. Because here comes a time in God's calendar. He lets people know, look, he, he's constantly every day showing us who he is by ourselves and by creation and how he loves us, how he died for us. But people ignore they want to do their own thing. There's a way to see right in the man's eyes and enter of his death. Because he's going, he going to send man a strong delusion. He's going to send them a, they're going to believe a lie. And people are believing a lie today. He even tells us in Romans chapter 1, people who do such things. Oh, have mercy. Uh, Romans 1, watch this. Oh, this is powerful, you know. Romans 1. Remember it said, um, oh, Lord, let me get over there. Romans. Romans 1, look at, uh, I guess 22. The Romans 1, 22 says this. Professing themselves to be fools, they be, to, to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and forfeited beasts, and creeping things. Watch this, 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness, through the loss of their own heart, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God. 25. Romans 125, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and served the creature more than the creator who was best forever. People worship themselves. That's the, that's the creature. People, they, they are their own God. They believe in a lie that Satan uh, told Eve in the garden, you should be as God knowing good and evil. 
He was lying to her. That's the first lie. And men still believe it today. They believe their God. But it's only one God. Almighty God. And this is what we got to answer to. Watch this. Next verse 26. For this cause, uh, God gave them up to undefiled affections for the image. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of a woman burning in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves recompense of the error which was meet. Now I even said earlier about, I'm not condemning him, I'm just reading the Bible. But I want to see you people always focus on this particular part here about women with women and men with men. But he also includes, look what else he includes on, so you got to include this too. Because sin, sin. Ain't no sin greater than sin. He died for all sin. Yeah, Ain't no, see, we got to stop departmentalizing sin. Yeah. Well, this ain't greater than that. But it's still yeah, sin, yeah. and he died for that sin. Don't think because you doing this yeah. and they doing that, you all right? No, you, you bad too. Yeah. You, ever, you ever hear the term people say, term, this is the term they say. It ain't all that bad. Mm. That don't make sense to me. I think about it. It's not all that bad. So you're telling me it's some bad. If it ain't all that bad, I do have some that's bad. So what's that make it? Bad. If you leave a rotten apple in a basket with uh, uh, 10 other apples, so it's 11 all together, leave it there. Watch the rest of them get bad too. Be not deceived, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communication will corrupt good manners. Amen? Amen. We got to separate ourselves from these things. Not isolate ourselves because we got to be able to reach back and love them. If we got to love the hell out of them, we got to love them with the love of God. Amen. Watch this, watch this. Uh, um, um, 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. See, God let you do what you want to do. Now, here's the point I'm trying to make. It wasn't only just people who were living this lifestyle, but it was also in 29. Being filled with all unrestedness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, a list of this full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, Magnanimity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Now here's the first that this 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 this, this hits me hard. Look, 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. What he's saying there is that, you know, once we heard the truth, and when we do wrong, we want to do right, because God's spirit is in us. And sometimes it takes some of us longer than others. Yeah. Amen? Because some of us struggle with things more than other people do. Amen? Because our, 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 our environment in certain things might be a little different. Take a person who was hooked on heroin, it's going to be kind of hard just the next day, I'm, I'm all right. Because it has to affect to their body and their system, their nervous system, every part of them. So it's going to be, it's going to be a, the temptation is going to be stronger to fall back under. So what he's saying here, these people even knowing that the judgment of God is, is, a, is a harsh ju judgment, they don't care, they're going to do it anyway. That's the person whose heart is made up. I don't care what you do. You ever, here's the thing I put in there. You ever try to change somebody's mind? Now, I preach and I teach. But I can't make you make no decision. I can't make you do whatever. You do, you, you do what you want to do. Yeah, you might hear me talking, but you're still going to do what you want to do. You see? But that's why we lift up the Word of God, because the more words you have, the more it can, it can be, be convincing. And it's more what the Holy Spirit can use uh, uh, to come at you and to come at me to convince us and to let us know that God loves us. Amen? And that's why we faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why we got to get filled up on this truth. Because when the devil comes, when he throws his dart at us, we got something on the inside and we can say, homie, we don't play that no more. We don't play that. We don't walk that way no more. This is the way we live. So this is why, y'all, our vote counts. And this... God's plan for this world is headed in a direction that's already been in stone. Seriously. It's already finished. It's finished. Whatever, I don't care what, who comes on the scene, 
God's plan is going to happen. We gotta be in this, we gotta be the Bible. That's why I said I said earlier, heaven and earth is gonna pass away. But my words are gonna last forever. So we with his word. He said, if I, you abide in my word, and you know, my words abide in you. Praise God. You should ask what you will, and it's be good, it'll be done unto you. So I'm gonna I'm I'm stay with it. Abide just means to stay with. Trust in. So I'm, I'm abiding his word. And that's all we need to do. Because that's the thing that's going to bring us through. Is his word. Is his word. Amen. It's going to bring us through. I just pray for those souls who don't know Christ. I really do because I look at this election coming up. And you got. I see it's this big war. I mean it's going to be terrible y'all. It's going to be nasty. You ever seen a child don't get their way? And they go on a rampage? I ain't, you know, they're they, they just going to throw a little tantrum. You're going to see adults throwing tantrums. You're going to see people tripping out because it didn't turn out the way they wanted to turn out. I'm telling you right now. God is, God already knows what's going on. Amen. Amen. You vote with conviction. You vote with knowing what you know and knowing what the candidates are. Do your research. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to come back sometime in October before November and you know, I'm not going to test y'all, <laughs> but we're going to review some things because, like I said, it's important that we know what the candidates are teaching. Not because we like them, or not because we don't like them. What are they teaching and preaching concerning the Word of God? That's the test. And that's when you vote for Jesus. Regardless what party is under, I'm voting for Jesus. Amen. God bless y'all and God love y'all. Amen. 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 Tell somebody about Jesus this week. Amen. Tell them that he saves, he sanctifies, and he delivers. Amen. God bless you.